It is a picturesque view over the Calabar River as the sun sets. The scenic view, watching from the cliff of one of Nigeria's prestigious institutions of learning, is breathtaking and alluring at any given time. In spare Gloria Day, a Latin phrase translated to mean in the hope of the glory of God is the motto of one of Nigeria's foremost and finest institutions founded by missionaries from the United Presbyterian Church of Scotland in 1895. Welcome to the Hope Waddle Training Institution, HWTI, or popularly known as HOWARD. Situated east of the Niger, precisely in Calabar, South South Nigeria. The school, named after Reverend Hope Master Tumwado, is always a delight to visit and acquire education that sets any who dares to thread its path to life's fulfillment and destiny attainment. Aside from Reverend Hope Wado being visible and famous for this citadel, History has it that Scottish missionary Mary Michelle Slater was a driving force behind the establishment of the Hope Waddle Training Institution. This is obviously not unconnected with the fact that Slater landed in Calabar in 1876 before the establishment of HWTI in 1895. And so, Hope Waddle, as commonly called, started to grow in leaps and bounds, leaving indelible marks which have stood in good light of this never-say-die institution. For what was trendy at the time is today antiquity and relics adorn the landscape of the school. One of such edifices that captures the mind and sight of any first-time visitor is the first school building which is a prefabricated classroom block of corrugated iron sheets and Scandinavian peach pine built by Glasgow firm and shipped to Calabar where it was assembled in 1894. By March 1895, teaching had commenced and by 1900, the school had 42 students venturing into various skilled acquisition such as gardening, printing, tailoring, engineering, among many others. The Hope Waddle Training Institution boasts of notable alumni, a mention of very few may be ideal. Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, Nigeria's first president. Akanwibiam, medical missionary and governor of erstwhile Eastern Region. Eyoita, leader of the Eastern Government of Nigeria in 1951, and Denis Osadebe, Premier of the Mid-Western Region of Nigeria, as well as Efyong Upong Aye, a renowned educationist and one-time principal of the school, whose remains were interred in the school as a mark of honor, among many others. Famous lawyer and politician Adeniro Gunsoya also completed his primary education from the Hope Waddle Training Institution. The list is obviously endless. As obtained in many climes, countries strive to protect natural heritage sites and historical relics. Many countries go out of their comfort zones to keep conditions of these relics close to pristine. For the Hope Waddle, the old students have arisen to the occasion, putting their mind and resources to saving the infrastructure from decay, which will be a source of education for future generations. The project that we are trying to do now, which is restoring the oldest building in this compound, is a natural that a lot of rot is in the building with um, termites all over the place. But with God's guidance and help, 
We are holding the building up now. Uh, and I thank the team that is working with me that um, we have been able to hold the building right now at a certain stage. We still have a long way to go. Okay. So that is our cardinal objective, to basically give back to the school that has um, given us all the uh, accolades that we have. So part of our strategic planning is to make sure that on a yearly basis, we try to do projects that could, you know, bring back the um, glory which the school has always been known for. And this particular outside view, I'm sure you've captured it, we've converted the entire space. And this lab where we are has never been like this. This lab itself, you know, reckons with the school. And for many years, they felt that they should put a finishing touch to it. So what we're trying to do here is to if you will, recalibrate the entire infrastructure here from the painting, from the plumbing, from the carpentry, and then the final icing of it will be, you know, equipping it with the necessary apparatus and um, reagents which um, the students would need so that um, they can. Mr. Onoyom Ita is the present principal of the school and he is grateful for the efforts of old student groupings to sustain the standard of the school, but he is clamoring for more. The challenges are the decay in the infrastructure, like the main block there, no lights, and the floors made, you know, yeah, they were wooden floors, some are, some are bad. That has been why we've not been able to put our students there for this term. Others, in terms of sports, we don't have volleyball courts. The one that was started there, you can see the, the volley, the basketball not completed, the lawn tennis not completed, and we still need most of these sports in order for students to have variety between sports. And I want to leave hope model that want, will continue to be great in all ramifications, in competitions, in academics, in buildings, infrastructure. Inasmuch as some old students celebrate their alma mater, looking forward to sustaining the values that the school exhibits, present-day students look in the direction of present-day infrastructure to meet modern realities. It has been interesting. Learning has been fun. It's a great school. They, had, they have quality teachers, good, outstanding academic works in the school, and then the way the school gives is good rules and regulation. So I just like the school. They have nice teachers, well coordinated students, and uh, they are neat people. There is no doubt that Hope Waddle Training Institution has transcended various generational processes and these have obviously impacted on the way things are run in the school. These may however pose a challenge. Looking at my own time, after the war, I came in in 1970, I met great men, 
students that were more matured. Because, for instance, I came in to see a senior school prefect that he was a war veteran during the Biafran War. He was so powerful, more than even a teacher. He was great. And he was running the school effectively. And looking at those times, you see that students were more mature as they came in compared to today. Now you have 10 year old. In those days, parents were not faking the years of their children. But today, parents fake the years, and you see a child come, he said, Oh, he's 14, he's 12. Beside me. If you want to trace, this child is around 10. And they come in here without ability to do anything for themselves. Whereas in those days, especially in the burning house, we were able to do a lot of things. You take care of yourself, wash your clothes, dry them, pick them. And the, all the morning activities and after all the activities of the school, you have to partake effectively. But today, hardly you see a child cutting grass. In those days, you have to cut grass. Any other activity, you have to perform. For an institution with a high regard for Christian virtues, with symbols on its crest from the burning bush, the dove, the ship, and to the anchor to illustrate its vision, those who once dwelt within the confines of its environment have many descriptions about the school. These descriptions seem to be ringing the bell of an awakening, an awakening to uphold the ideals of the great school who has innumerable successful persons in different spheres scattered around the world. With age and an endurance from the vagaries of the weather spanning for over a century, the school is obviously begging for attention and urgently so. The museum took over this ancient building about 15 years ago and have abandoned it. The building was just about collapsing. If we did not start doing this intervention, the next rainy season, 
this entire building would have been down. And it would only not have all students have decided to do whatsoever we can do to hold this building. That is what we are doing right now. We've discovered... Like any person, edifice or place on earth, there is actually no ruling out of some levels of challenges which will not show up. As the Hope Water Training Institution saw us into new years and decades as it were, what can stakeholders do to build on existing foundations laid? We want to partner with the school because we've seen a lot of things that you know, we think should be corrected and it is by partnering with the school that we'll be able to bring those things about. One of the highlights in you know, the dinner is the launching of the endowment fund, 125 million endowment fund. With that, you know, we'll be able to invest the funds and the proceeds would be used you know, in a, 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 a doing a lot for the school. As I speak to you, there is a master plan that was developed by the North America branch and it's remained on paper for the past 10 years or more because the funds are not there. So we believe that before the end of our tenure, we are confident that we will be able to meet this 125 million you know, for the endowment fund and beyond. And then we'll be able to start with the implementation of what is contained in the master plan. We are looking out for an investment in perpetuity, such that um, the proceeds from this investment will be used to develop the school. The mission can't do everything, government can't do everything. And so all students want to give back to the school and then give back to the school the way we're giving in our time. Uh, if there is going to be a, a global change. You see, before it used to be within. This time, changing of whole model is not only within. We now have people globally. So hands have to be on deck. Recently I've introduced what I call weekly quiz in the school. The first one was held last week and uh, I've gotten a report from my VP Academics that it was very interesting and we are looking forward to the next class. That is, teachers will set questions in all the subjects and then the authority will sell those questions and a particular, every Wednesday, to assemble a particular class to compete on those subjects. And that will help us to assess both the teachers and the students. If you have done well and the questions were said by you and the students can't answer those questions, it means there's something wrong somewhere. That would make you to know that either you thought that you didn't teach well. So that's an innovation that was not in my own time, but we are trying to see how we can close all gaps to make sure students are well equipped when it comes to academics. Okay. Uh, Hope Model can, can match up with any other secondary school. As far as I'm concerned, what, the quality of what is made up here is, is what being a secondary school. Then in life, they, they, there's likely to be improvement along the line. So for now, for now, I don't see anything that is, is so much needed here. Other than that, I think um, they should improve on the welfare of the teachers and other staffs so that we can really empty ourselves for the benefits of the children and the society. For many indices, 
the future of the Great Hope Water Training Institution is glorious. With all hands on deck, the school is sure to make giant strides. The feat attained by all and sundry to keep the school running and its flag flying high cannot be wished away. However, like Oliver Twist, the school's management says it needs more. With infrastructure and lovely lawns dotting the landscape, the prestige of the school should not be allowed to drag in the mode. 125 years can be described as no mean feat in the life of an institution, and the red carpet rolled out in celebration is an indication that students, whether old or new, will be relentless to ensure that who would through valor see, let him come hither. One here will constant be, come wind, come weather. As written by John Buyan, will be a guiding light to be a dogged believer of Christ and his ideals until we see him in glory. In spare, Gloria Kemp.